Darko just going around, <laughs> shuffling, so, and just kicking bitch. shit around. And then Darko's going to storm off kind of like uh, into the general woods direction. Okay. Um, and do I see any like wildlife, like deer, nature, or anything like that around? Um, so you are a small figure. So I will give you a stealth check. You're being loud, but I'll give you a stealth check as you go kind of to check and stomp about and figure out what in the world is going on with no food being available. God damn it. This is going to be a great By game. the way, I got the stream up, guys. Nice. Did catch the wet dream? I did not, but we'll catch everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, not eating today, boys. Uh, it was a seven, by the way. I see you. Um, so, you do find some berry bushes. Now, these berry bushes are not the, um, the good berries that you guys have frequently found near the Jolly Roger. These mm -hmm. do look to be more blackberry blueberry you're not quite certain they could even be a raspberry that aren't quite um ready yet but you can try them if you wish or you can give me a medicine check if anyone else wishes to wake up at any time i'll do a medicine out. check i'm not awake but i am doing one as if like in my dream I do. god damn it <laughs> so you're over here <laughs> you're over here any mini miny mo this has to fill my belly. <laughs> you yeah. reach I'm down and pull you grab a handful of berries. Of this plant. I'm pulling every berry <laughs> off of this plant. Every single one. Yeah. Me, I'm in that much of a rage me, right uh, now, not giving a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> give me a sleight of hand. Let's see how much you can gather here. It's going to be like three berries. Yeah, All see? Right. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Shit. Just as, please don't it. have me roll anymore. As you're so focused <laughs> on just ramming your hand in this bush, just, oh, damn it, I'll just eat whatever uh, uh, this berry right here. Uh, uh. You're just, you don't catch that. There are more thorns in this bush. This is absolutely a thorny berry bush. And then by the time you realize it, you're just like, God damn it, I'm so over this shit. That is going to be on top of your already early morning setback. <laughs> Five additional <laughs> points of damage. Pretty sure Darko is just like super hangry. <laughs> I am. I am. So I'm gonna immediately just use firebolt on this bush and just blow it to bits. You guys, those of you who are semi-conscious, just hear like a, <laughs> a quick little <laughs> spurt. Just, you firebolt this this bush and it, it's it's quickly burning to a crisp of no concern. Yeah. In your hand. You have an assortment of about 12 thorns that are pricked within your palm <laughs> and four berries. The I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say fuck the berries and I'm just gonna try and like- The know. worst trade in the history of trades. <laughs> How you like, you're trying like flick things off of your hands. I'm gonna try and just get the thorns out of my hand that way at first. And okay. if that doesn't Easy work, enough. then I guess I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Rage, ragefully- enough pull them out of my hand you, you take a little bit of time clearing up your hand uh you know getting yourself in state measures um etc and uh, you do manage to clear your hand of any thorns but you dropped your four berries on the floor which you could pick up because the rest of the bushes burnt too crisp you do still have four viable berries which are not covered in thorns if you wanted to pick them up off the floor and pop them in your yep. mouth otherwise you yep. use them um no i'm just gonna i'm gonna step on them as i walk away <laughs> as you as you step on them and walk away chosen meanwhile is taking us a, a good sleep just giving an ever so odd grin in his rest as he dreams of almost an improbable possibility no chosen churros available it's as if it's as if he knows but as he sleeps and dreams Darko, you are still hungry, and the rest of the yep. group is still sleeping. Yep. Daybreak has come. It is probably between 5 and 6 in the morning. What do you choose to do? 
as the rest uh, of the party is. Is there any? Asleep. Is there any like high ground or high point around us anywhere? Like in, in our immediate vicinity, like a big boulder that I can climb on top of. For you is high. <laughs> if you I mean, a, like a couple logs and step on a couple stones, you you, you can climb onto one of the boulders. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Whatever you stand on, Pablo is going to be like six feet, putting you to seven <laughs> in retrospect. Just I mean, some place where I can get like an actual uh, perspective, I vantage guess, point. over vantage point over the forest around us. Are we around the wagon at all? Okay. No. Um, I mean, you guys did bring the wagon. You can jump on the wagon if you wish. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll jump on top. You of could the probably wagon. even move the wagon closer to a rock and then climb a rock. Okay, you jump on top of the wagon. You get like a. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see over a couple bushes. Um, give me one so more perception. I... Okay. Um. And then tell me what you're going. Look, what you're yeah. specifying. Come on! Oh my god! Oh my god! Very nice. It was so close to another cool. one. <laughs> <laughs> What specifics were you trying to pull? Okay, I am looking for anything alive that's moving at this point um, that is of animal in nature. Um, and then what I plan on doing is um, hitting it with a, a fire bolt as you soon as I see something. <clears throat> okay, easy enough. You see. A jackrabbit. I should you see it kind of hopping around, moving about it. I'm assuming you're with your high perception. You see that you you're, you're gonna wait for a moment for it to find its own meal, so it stays still. As right. It does. You fire fireball. Give me your fireball. Mm. How do I roll it from here? Oh, here it is. And then just roll it again. Perfect. Absolutely. You fire a fireball. And it goes just at, just to like about 60 or so feet. And you hear like a. You, you not only see that there is a little crispy thing sizzling ahead, but if you don't get to it quick enough, it will burn and char. Okay. So then I'm going to jump down off of the, uh, the wagon. And go run to the rest of you guys hear like a creak, a little wooden creak, like a <laughs> like a heavy kind of like individual <laughs> crash onto the floor, and then you just hear like the little like footprints <laughs> <laughs> further into the distance as he is hustling to go and grab him himself mm -hmm. a meal. You do manage to get to the jackrabbit in time. In doing so, you um find it to be almost. Perfect to the way you like it. I'm gonna just pick it up and eat Otherwise. it like a fucking caveman. You bring yourself to bring it. You bring it back to the camp. Mm -hmm. Nope. All right. You, oh, I'm sorry. There's like a lag going on. Right eat now. it. Um. Is it me? The spot. I've had worse. Oh, yeah, I see the lag too. Yeah. Oh, is there a lag going on? Is it just me? Yeah. Bye. Yeah, no, it's it's super laggy. Oh, okay. Oh, we lost our DM. For for hi speed boost <laughs> four more boosts, and our DM <laughs> will not lag. <laughs> it is just something else with this. Um, I'll put it on the device again. I think it's just the the device. So I would I like to like mm -hmm. like proudfully be walking back into camp, kind of like eating it like you would eat like a turkey leg at Disneyland okay. kind of thing. You know, for what sure, I mean? for sure, obnoxious and showy. Yes, you got it. I'm very proud yeah. that I finally got myself some breakfast. Has anyone woken up at this point? You see, still knocked out, Alistar. Awake? 
You're awake? Really? Are you? No, I'm asking if you're awake. No, I'm still sleeping. Okay. You, you're walking in proud and not a single witness, but you damn right are proud of your achievement. I don't give a shit at this point. I'm going to go plop down right in the middle of the camp, just kind of like, you know, post up like one of those like proud cowboys, like back against the tree kind of thing, and just like, like eat loudly, obnoxiously. Eventually, all of you guys come to a full rest. So you guys can go ahead and roll those and, and trigger it on your uh, sheet if you guys have not already. In doing so, when you guys do, you see Darko really enjoying a good meal. Not even a lick of a doubt of enjoying what it is he has acquired and where it has been acquired from. No one quite understands. I pull out a naps, a little not knapsack, but a my, my little lunch baggies. Okay, and your little brown bag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. is your breakfast in so, so, oh, Probably just like a quickly put together like breakfast sandwich of sorts or something that like is more of like granola based, like on the go okay. type okay. ration. Okay. Nothing is special. I'm going to okay. side eye chosen as he's putting his breakfast together to make sure he doesn't pull any churros out of his bag. <laughs> <laughs> as I'm as chewing on I'm just like looking at him like. <laughs> as you're watching with a side eye. And <laughs> what are you doing? As you Henry. wake up, you are in Alistar's arms still. <laughs> oh, what the mate? <laughs> oh my god. I think this is the second time this has happened. This is starting to get too regular, mate. Uh... Huh? Huh? Look, get off of me. <laughs> get off of me? You having your arms around me, mate. You uh... were a book. I, I swear you were a book. Well, I'm not going to tell I've you the things it. that he was doing to you in your sleep, then. Well, mate, I, you don't have to paint me a picture. I've seen what he's done to the, his bloody books. Oh, I need to bathe. Is there any water yeah. around here? Or is he just going to, like, on. walk oh, off, like, shaking himself? Like, mm. looking for uh, a pool of water somewhere? He needs to drink his trousers. Mm. You kind of, like, sniff the air, and you do pick up just a hint of some sea salt. You have a nose for this kind of thing. You imagine it's probably just a mile off south. Oh, mate, I'm going to go clean myself. And Henry just starts walking towards there. As you go to find your um, water, fresh or not, Alistar, you, you are also obviously awakened due to this. Uh, uh, another fine day. So since you changed your mind, can I have some breakfast? <laughs> Chosen pulls a little bag out and just kind of shoves it in his face. <laughs> As he does that, Darko is really eyeing this bag that was passed the interception. As Alistar opens it, Darko, you see that there is not a single churro in sight, and you do find that very disturbing. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm gonna. Send. I'm gonna use cast sending. Okay. Who are you sending to? Um, to rep. Okay. Don't count the words. Just do it. Only five words, right? Yes. Rep. This chosen. Make three barrels. Of chosen churros in five days. Giants come to pick them up. You guys all hear just something about barrels, pick God. things up. Do you say anything else? That's 24. Got right? six more. Oh, I got six more? Oh, yeah. uh, make sure half cream filled. <laughs> One more. Please. Woo. Woo. Mm -hmm. All right. You leave it at that. Ooh. With that, Rhett pops yeah. in your head. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> what? Pretty cool. He just slides <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Is that chosen? Uh, uh, did you leave the recipe? If you did, 
Where is it? I really don't want to screw these up, man. And in five days, barrels? Can I get the cobalt to help? That's where his message ends. Now, is sending something that goes back, like I have to cast it? You'd have it to again. recast it each time, yeah. Fuck. I cast it one more time out. then. Okay. <clears throat> Casting again. Wait one second. Uh, but seriously, like, how many churros in a barrel? This we need to know this. <laughs> we we have not done the math on that yet, <laughs> but we got a big order. <laughs> All right, casting sending again. I imagine chosen churros to be like a cool, like one and a half footer, like mean looking churros. You know? Oh, for Think sure. Think of them as tiny churros. You know? Okay. Costco. Yes. Churro. Get cobalts to help. Chosen churro recipe in chosen recipe book. Buy stove. Make sure they are exactly like. Recipe. Please. Don't fuck up. <laughs> Perfect. Totally. Like, I found it. It's. Whoa. That's a lot of churros. We're on it. I will get Meek on the job. Meek! You hear him yelling off to the side. And then, <laughs> though it's not a part. Of, the, of his response, Meek is so loud in, re in, in, in responding to Rep momentarily, you hear like a little bit of Meek seep through into your mind, and you hear, ah. Never <laughs> <laughs> and then it cuts out. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, just get Tilk to do stuff. Why do we keep having Meek do shit? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Tilk building a boat for you? Uh, it's supposed Meek? to be Meek building the boat. Doing everything. Oh. Uh, He's Meek. also helping with He's the repairs on the JR, the second floor. Yeah, yeah. Meek is Meek is a, is a, is like a massive construction company of a single individual. Wow. Yeah. Uh, once he sends that message, he turns to the crew. Um, chosen turns the crew. How many barrels was it again? Three. Three. Yeah. Are you doing the calculations of how many churros would be in three barrels? Yes, sir. Nice. Uh, chosen have conversation with giant chief lady. Chosen able to barter us uh, passage through forest without conflict with giants. So also, that's where those churros went. Better the churros than you. Mm. The other options? That wouldn't have. I, well, I mean, no, it's a good, good choice on the churros. Chosen mm. only have so many churros. They demand churros now. I tell them they have more churros if they wait. Mm. They agree. Well, but they also gave me or gave chosen direction on where to find. Cave, rock quarry. They said on edge of rock mountain northeast of here called uh, called crevice area. The upon the upon the crevice. Upon the crevice. So I'm I assuming tend it's to like it this area. <laughs> I would assume so, it's like up here somewhere the crevice the well balls. he they also told you um north east yeah no, isn't this northeast no it's northwest oh it's like this way that's right yeah that's more accurate to uh, the assumed potential got it got it got it <clears throat> those and think we go toward mountain hit mountain ridge and go east. All right. Sounds like a plan. 
I and then cast oh, sending. We... I cast sending one more time. Waste all my level three spell slots. <laughs> That's a lot of churros. They're gonna go uh, stale before they're eaten. Uh, I cast sending to talk to the horny lady. Okay. Horny lady. Chosen. Have better idea of where rock quarry is. From forest entrance, it is northwest. Do you end your message? Or is there anything else? I think I only have like, what, four words left? I yeah, thought I wasn't you. counting, sorry. Yeah, but, but you don't. You never have to use them all, though. Yeah, yeah well, that's fine. Got that's fine. Time. You got it. Yeah. <clears throat> we should say you have to use factory. exactly twenty-five. Well, the good thing they have five days, huh? <laughs> it would take two and two and a half days to make those churros. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's more like three point one <laughs> with the old timey barrel. <laughs> do they have? Do they have like prepackaged foods in in this world? Can we start prepackaging and selling the? Uh, Frozen, you, the chosen churros in the you have store. seen prepackaged goods, but not in the sense of fresh food. But there's a market for everything. So, horny Pickle lady, churros. aka Naza, she responds. Um, what if I told you I was here when we have a camp? I'm pretty sure if you made it to the tribe. It would send some gods to lead you to us. Check it out. Okay. Tribe, I'm assuming, is this, like, encampment here? Mm -hmm. You guys originally had uh, came out here to help barricade where this uh, tribe or village has been staying to give them aid. Got it. Horny lady say we go to tribe, and tribe will take us to horny lady. All right. It's not too far from here. Only a mile ahead. We nearly saw it for the other day, yesterday, last night. Absolutely correct. On that point, Chosen, you... You were actually one of the only ones who briefly saw what it was that was out there, about 300 or so feet ahead of you, um, when you guys arrive to this location. When you quickly think about it, you vaguely recall this, like, almost as if it was a, a centaur, but bigger, bulkier, the size of a giant with six limbs. You weren't certain it was four legs or four arms, but there was a lot of something moving around and thrashing about in the distance. You knew from the moment you saw it that you had no, you didn't want any business with it due to your guys' team's current condition, and you made the call to turn around. It's been a day, or a night. But you can re you know, recall that to them if you wish to give them a heads up. Or yeah, I've kind of like, described. Chosen see big creature with many arms and legs, at least five times size of ch Chosen. And yes, it was Henry. <laughs> no, 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 no. This was not. This was not Henry turned ape. This was something else. It had five arms, six arms, and legs, and was smashing tribe. We must proceed with caution. Yeah, I agree. Real quick, remind me. With um the with uh jer with Jerkel, run uh run gem run ground Jerkel, Jerkel. The guy in the uh the yeah. the uh, the house the property was it Alistar? I was I was playing Jerkel. Is that what you're saying? No, like yeah. Was it was he the one like you you're the one that protected him right when you get when you brought him to the like you added him to your guys's uh reservoir of people to help you guys he he joined your group because oh, of you correct that's Jerkle. yeah, yeah run ground circle yeah he's with naza that's why that's what i was asking that's right yeah i protected yeah, okay. him make sure we 
Yep, I mean, yeah, so, Naza has a party of what four or something. Yes. So while um, Chosen is telling you guys all this, Alistar, you hear in your mind a message coming from Run Ran. It would seem that you guys are close. Naza has told me that you have arrived in the forest. We have seen terrifying things, Alistar. Terrifying. Be safe. And it cuts out. And I totally forgot to click on run again. Boop. We'll put him right there. <laughs> I meant to put him hey, right there. <laughs> what's Ooh. up, Jericho? But he passes Jericho. these along that message. Do you respond? You you can respond. Yeah, like in my head, I guess I respond. <laughs> or I say it out loud and everyone's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? You could do either. <laughs> Jericho, good to hear from you. Yes, we're, we're less than a few hours out. We'll see you shortly. Wait us outside of the wall. Don't worry about any scary things. I can protect you. Pretty sure last time I saw him, he, like, thought I was a super wizard or something. I don't remember why he joined us. That's what brief, I think. <laughs> a brief moment comes through it. And you hear... um. Yes, how should I say it? Like, uh, more of a concern. Um, let me turn it down. Mm-hmm. Or a doubt in his response. He does cast a sending again toward you. And he's like, We are not at the tribe, but they will bring you to us. As Naza has informed me, I've already made my way toward you all. Whether I find you first, we shall see. The tribe will help. And then it cuts out. Very ominous. <laughs> yes, we'll see you soon. Oops. Try to eat something. You, you sound a Try, try to hungry, eat something. Hungry. <laughs> Maybe get some rest. <laughs> Some As you run you, on, you, you don't hear any kind of there. response. You're so skinny. <laughs> Jacko, gain some weight. Uh, it is now you guys I alone. Start packing up the carts and getting ready to head towards uh, the tribe. All right. Anyone else? Anything else you guys are preparing before departing? Well, Henry is still walking over to the ocean, so... He doesn't this know is true. What's going on? <laughs> 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 We're just gonna ditch him. <laughs> Before I mean, you how arrive, fast are you walking? Because it takes like twenty minutes to walk a mile, right? No, it should not take twenty minutes. Right? You're pretty pretty to, to walk, and I know. Maybe for <laughs> you, maybe for Alistar, because you're an old dude. I walk but... at a leisurely pace. Yeah, Henry's a young dude. He's trying to. He's trying to get somewhere. Um, but Henry, before you arrive, one more thing occurs for the group outside of yourself. Cool. Marsh is sleeping. You guys remember, oh, you know, maybe we should wake him up. He's sleeping by Darko. So Darko, you're the first to hear this, but Chosen and Alistar, you guys do hear him also going about mumbling if you give him the attention. He's just like, I won't shoot you. I won't, I won't, I won't shoot you. All right, fine. He's, he's sleeping right now? He's sleeping, and you guys hear him mumbling in his sleep that he won't shoot him, he won't shoot him. And after, like, a slow pause, you hear, like, a brief sigh or let go of air, and then, all right, fine. And that's kind of all you hear. All right. Mm-hmm. I kind of pick him up like a baby and put him in the back of the cart. All right. Uh, as, as you lift him, he does kind of briefly wake up. He's like, I'm chosen. I'm just so... I'm just so, and he kind of dozes back off. He, this tired old man has not rested <laughs> pretty much. I get, a, I, I get some nice cushion under him and, and put a blanket on him and get him nice and situated in the cart. Well, and very slim. Always the one keeping the walks constantly. Yeah, breaking constantly. up for everyone else. Yeah, I can't hear you. Oh, he's 
going to have to switch to the phone soon. Mm -hmm. And then Chosen's God descends and gives us all amazing <laughs> churros. Yeah, I think it's yeah. time to pray. Which Ooh, automatically pray. levels us all up by three. Please withdraw <laughs> your characters. <laughs> It's like it's like the rare candy in Pokemon Red or Blue. It's like exactly. Automatic level. Uh, Alex, I'm I'm sorry. We we changed the narrative as soon as you were out. Uh, yeah, go for it. it. The game has changed. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Chosen's God came down, gave us all these magical churros, and we advanced three levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, insta level <laughs> churros. I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, crazy. they're the rare candy of this world, essentially. <laughs> That's a real road candy. I'll have to keep that one in mind. <laughs> so, um, sorry. What did you guys miss? I guess is is where the the. I actually don't pretty know. much everything you were just saying before <laughs> was that when chosen picked him up. You were talking. You were you were talking about Mars being carried, and then. Yeah, I had put him down in a comfy situation, and then we didn't hear anything after what you started to say. Gotcha. <clears throat> He just kind of briefly woke up, uh, recognized that it was you chosen putting him into the uh, cart, and he kind of just like seemed to be almost dazed and dozed. He was just like, oh, I'm sorry. Like he kind of like goes into an apology, and then he just drifts off. And uh, you, Alistar, and Darko, since you're present, understand that he has absolutely been the one um, constantly keep you know being away, keeping watch, exhausted. Like this dude has just not had a break, and you understand that he's probably just trying to recoup from all the intense, continuous action. Upon traveling amongst you, your members of the squad, he is an old man, and he has been the guy who's like, "Well, I don't sleep; I stay up and watch." <laughs> I'm, I pick four dirty berries that I see off the ground, and I hand them to him, and I say, "You get your rest now." Four <laughs> dirty berries. <laughs> you hand him four crushed, <laughs> four partial dirty berries. <laughs> yeah, because I step on them. them. <laughs> <laughs> and. He goes, he, he trusts you up passively as he kind of takes them in and leaves a little like bluish stain upon his bottom lip. You're not, you, they seem okay. <laughs> it's a good Did you just pass new berries head. on him? Just random I berries. A good berry into the squish These were the berries that I stepped on earlier. Anything else you guys wish to do? Otherwise, uh, if there's, there's nothing else you guys wish to do with Marsh, then we'll go to where Henry is currently residing. Well, and just quickly, Henry is like have each the good berry, and I want him to roll a whatever it is. Oh, are you giving him the good berry, or giving him the berry that that Mark Darko the berry, smoked? And then I, I then I put a good berry in with that. Then you slipped in a good berry. Mm. Let's see, you bring a punk. I gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, let's see if he feels good after. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, give me one quick second. Another centaur move. <laughs> Let me pull his thing. Let me roll for him real quick. Oh man, this poor dude. And and then while he's eating it, I'll say, and don't you worry, chosen is sent for a whole bunch of bolts for you. Well, zero, <laughs> but you can use them as bolts. <laughs> <laughs> Like I guess made up an entire weapon for a churl bolt. Um, yep. Marsh feels pretty okay in his slumber. We'll see how he feels when he wakes up. So right as rain, hey, on to Henry. Meanwhile, Henry, give me a perception check as you travel. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Please hold. Uh, not the worst, not the worst. <laughs> you do seem to pick up your senses straight you're about a quarter mile away you do see some water ahead you don't see any kind of like horizon or breaking as you're going down toward it um you're probably descending no more than maybe seven or so feet uh it's not steep it's not overly moist either it doesn't seem like the water rises this high until about the four foot area and upon making toward it, you see three things. The m first immediate thing you see due to your passive perception is about 
400 or so feet away to what would be your right facing south, so toward your west, you see what seems to be a small little group of people gathering water. They're not, I mean, sure, 400 feet of shouting range, but they're not in definitive hearing range. But you see them. And they seem to be very simple dressed. They seem to be very tribey like. They're not well, you know, well garmented. They're not, they have, from, from what you assume at this distance, there's no shimmering items in your direction. It doesn't seem like they're armed or any sort. The other two things you see is you do see water. You smell the salt. You assume it to absolutely be ocean water. And as you look out now that you're at the base, it opens up. The bay kind of closes and then expands out into an everlasting blue after what looks to be, from where you're standing on the right-hand side, often in the distance, a very dry scape about 30 or so feet up. You just see a huge thing of rocks building up and maybe a desert. Who knows? And then on the left-hand side, you see what you imagine to be where the quiet sigil was based off of your previous adventures. Um, basically, what you'd be looking at, sorry, I could ping it, is out here you see it rise about 30 or so feet, and then over here you see it probably, you're not even sure if it's leveled or not, but from the distance you notice that that has to be kind of about the whereabouts where the quiet sigil was and all of your other escapades in that area. <clears throat> Third thing that you notice is all the rocks around here are clear. Almost clear. As if they were glass. Not sharp. Some of them mostly look very smooth, or even if they're even if they have like a polygonish shape shape, the edges are rounded. Interesting. <clears throat> um are there any smaller ones around? Oh, there's plenty of stones of various sizes, things that you could pop in your pocket, stones that are a bit, you know weighty that you wouldn't want to lug around um so you can easily collect a couple samples if that's what you wanted to do yeah i'm gonna collect a couple of them to uh make sure i ask alistar about them when i get back uh -oh. i will know a lot <laughs> henry thinks he will <laughs> uh -oh. all right easy and enough. then um well henry's gonna uh Uh, he's going to head over to the people. Okay. That'll probably take you just under a couple minutes. Um, do you announce yourself, or are you just kind of heading over there? Uh, I'm going to head over there, uh, but as I get closer, <clears throat> then when I feel like I'm in shouting range, I'm going to run. Ahoy! Might! You... Can you hear me? Do you understand? Do you understand common? You, you see all of them almost like deer, you know, throw their head up and look. And they all kind of go on. They, they're almost shuffling to hasten their pace and collecting. No what? one responds back to you, though. The water's not going anywhere. <laughs> I, I, do you know where we are? Can, can you give... Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? They all kind of seem to wave in your direction as if they're like warding you away like that kind of like we need nothing kind of sign i guess you could say like on on out on the seas you'd see that you know people kind of throw their hands out from their chest as if they like shoo go away you imagine they're giving you the shooing aspect as you come about a hundred feet toward them oh, um Perception, whether he's going to uh, like just blindly keep going at them. <clears throat> uh, no, so Henry kind of realizes that uh, they don't seem to be very outgoing to him. <clears throat> so he's going to stop and kind of put his hands up and just be like, okay. I kind of understand. Okay. Oh, I, I, I imagine you, you don't see many friendly folks around here. I understand. I mean, the bloody trees attacked us just a few days ago. <clears throat> uh, you, you, 
what the one of the individuals that you see notice that you notice immediately when you look out um, and you're closer to them now that they all kind of have this these elvish features they have the sharp pointed ears and the very slim gestures of their physique and they all seem to be capable in the sense of what they're carrying in their in their due diligence of work one of them a uh, gentleman he probably stands just short than the tallest individual there speaks out um we're not looking to trade or anything we're just gathering our own supplies we're minding our own we hope you do the same hi mate uh, if you are i i'm happy overjoyed to know that you understand me uh, w my mates and i we're we're kind of just lost ourselves and uh we're just trying to find some I, I believe a quarry around here. Are you familiar with these parts? Um, are you asking for direction? If you got them. Where are you trying to go? There's supposedly some quarry around here with uh, some invaluable so <laughs> minerals of some sort that we're supposed to be going to help protect. <laughs> but blimey, mate. All the land looks the same to me. Um, coin. We barter, but I couldn't tell you anything about coin. <laughs> you barter? What? What are you? What are you bartering? Uh, that's our trade. We don't. We don't exchange currency. I guess. I. Uh, what do you exchange? What we need? What you need? I Savvy, are you saying that if I have something that you need, you can give me directions? Kind of looks to the other three. They shrug. Anyone else who was or wasn't present there is no longer there as they took off. I mean... Yeah. What are you offering? And keep your distance. We're concerned. Interesting, mate. You need knowledge. Uh, I need knowledge, and you need not coin. Uh, I see that you need supplies. Are you familiar with churros? No. Oh, I blimey, mate. No, bloody magical. We can arrange a delivery if you need some, <laughs> just for some simple directions. So you're promising something on nothing? Aye, but you give me directions with nothing. It's faith. You could be leading me uh, astray. I don't know that you even know the parts. You mentioned faith, and he like reaches a talisman necklace that's kind of like on his waist. It's kind of like uh, round, uh, 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 wrapped around his belt. It looks as if the the actual necklace aspect of it is broken, and it, and he kind of rubs it, and he looks down and then looks back at you, and you're probably about fifty feet from him. Um, tell you what, tell us where to find you, and we'll send someone, a scout of ours. I were about a mile up, up the way yonder. Henry points where he came from. Okay, you can't, uh, you can't miss us. <laughs> we're a bloody fucking tragedy on the road. They're just crashing everywhere. Two cots, impossible keep, to miss. Keep an eye out for Eveline. I'll, I'll, I'll send, I'll send, I'll send Eveline, and uh, she'll, she'll justify if, if, if you mean good. Do you mind if I uh, I gather some water as well? Uh, are you done collecting? It, it won't bother us. And he kind of like starts backing away toward the rest of his group. Henry walks slowly over there just to make sure that it doesn't look like he's trying to be uh, any threat to them. And then when he gets to the water, uh, he'll fill his canteen back up that he has. Okay. And then, Mike, uh, can you describe the water source for me? So, where it is all salt water in your immediate vicinity, 
there seems to be a particular lack of a word for a wow that's not a wow with no pr productive concern to it. It's more like a big pit that they keep digging down in. And there's no actual like kind of shifting or shaft for it. The hole probably goes about seven or so feet down and you see what looks to be a puddle, not even a full like thing of water. And it looked like that they on their persons had a rope that they were using that was not left behind. Uh, well, then Henry will then um, go down there and start washing some of his uh, <laughs> some of his clothes in it real quick and then put it back on while it's still wet. And then, I, I thank you, mate. Again, a mile just right up here. You can't miss us. And then uh, Henry they will... They kind of wave off in your direction as they continue going until they, they're they heading up um, at, a, at a reasonable descent compared, uh, ascent where, compared to where you came down from. And, they, and the guy that was speaking to you kind of wavers at you. And uh, he just says, don't forget, uh, Eveline. That's all we're sending. So... You've been warned. You, we're warned about ever. What is Everline? <laughs> is Everline one of you? He's gone. They're, they just take it. They continue off. So to, to clarify he's exactly what he said, he said, we're only sending Everline. That's that's kind of like what he stressed, like that, that that he's not sending more than one person. Well, then Henry, after that, is confused with the interaction but he's gonna head back up and return back to back to the crew up there as you do the cart and wagon are completely prepared everyone seems to be ready to go it seems as if they were almost bickering over where who goes what and then as you walk in you hear threesome and tripod you're not quite sure what alistar is getting at <laughs> <laughs> Chosen only enjoy one person, two brain lady. Mm. Ooh, work on your education. Be with me and Darko and we can teach you more. And the chosen one is Ch more than just hitting people. Chosen one no like your stories. They boring. Mm. Not a story. It's what you what you made bloody on today? <laughs> What's this tripod you mentioned? Alistar keep talking about water is wet. Chosen no entertain. I, that story is getting real old, mate. <laughs> Chosen gets up on the cart and then looks down at Henry. Chosen think Captain Man with me. I but I think we should tarry a, a little bit longer. I, I may have uh, met somebody who might give us directions where we need to go. Oh, you left. Chosen already know where we go. I <laughs> where'd that be? To the tribe. They take us to Horny Lady. Horny Lady at Quarry now. An elf coming to help us, I believe. You think it's not five minutes? What do we need an elf for? To guide us. Know. To what? We already have guides. Yeah. No need. An elf? <laughs> you fucking 20 year ass elf? What do we need that for? Captain Man, you write note and leave it here for them. What the hell are you down there doing, Cap? Well, I was washing my bloody garb because I was being spooned by Alistair all night. Again, I might mention. And then we just ran into some elves? I Chosen think that this Chosen think Alistair already have tripod with Darko mm. and Captain Man. <laughs> what? God, what? Not Chosen, Chosen one myself. too many. <laughs> Chosen one too many. And Chosen have two brains to worry about. <laughs> be quite the lopsided tripod, sir. <laughs> I don't know what I bloody miss about this tripod, but I do think it's worth five minutes to see if that elf comes and gives us directions where the quarry is. No need. We have directions. We know where quarry is. Sure, is, the, to giants. is the elf coming with us? 
I don't bloody know to be to be right. They're just sending a, a last by the name of Everline. Well, our conversation has already taken three minutes. Might as well wait another two. <laughs> All right, so fill me in on the story of the tripod while we wait. Sorry, my friend. I mean no offense by this, but I believe we all liked you better as a monkey. Mm, you are a good monkey. <laughs> a fantastic monkey. Just smiling, nice. throwing rocks and I shit. I saw you oh, kill man, it was incredible. Lions. I saw you tear trees from the ground. It was incredible. Chosen tell giants that giant ape put us in dire straits. Let us keep that secret. Mm, well, that Henry way, was giant ape. By the way, he was a fantastic giant ape. I think you're a good monkey. <laughs> if oh, giants yeah, find out they murder four of their people, <laughs> they're not happy. Alright, it reminds me, Alison, mate. How long have you been able to turn people into giant apes? Remember when I turned you into a spider? I. Around that time. <laughs> <laughs> Why the bloody hell haven't you used these kind of powers in the past? Remember the bullets, those giant things that were attacking us? You think it might have been handy if I would have been a giant ape smashing them? I didn't get attacked by any bullets. I, I remember just sitting there by the bushes and talking to Darko in the tree. Mm -hmm. Well, that about bloody sums up why that fight would tiss up. Probably. Should probably contact us next time so we know what's happening. It's a good idea. You were right there in an elevator position. Ma oh, Master's asleep. He could tell you. You could see the whole bloody battlefield. I'm pretty sure the bush would have... I didn't see anything. <laughs> as as you guys are having this conversation, uh, for for sensual sense of time, we'll say that about 10 or so minutes pass. You guys hear some basic brush in the woods kind of creaking and cracking and then shibble aside and you see this elven woman appear. Excuse me. Sorry, I was burping. Let me pull up. I don't have her photo in there, but I have it here. So I will try to upload it in the meantime. But what you see is a uh, woman that's probably standing about four five, maybe four, six. And she has this huge cloak on that's completely made of leaves. On the very top, it has this unique fur lining that's even kind of picked up the, the color of the green and brown from the leaves. It's almost camouflaged within itself. She carries a bow and a short sword. The bow is along her side with a short sword in hand. She has brown boots with full-on green-like pants, but there seems to be some kind of unique texture to them. Along with that, the rest of her body gear seems to have the same similar green texture, but in a bit more of a wound state. She has a hood over her head that's niched with what seems to be more fiber. And then on her arms, like her forearm area, there seem there is um, a bunch of twigs, all kind of where they would be cut at the cuff, going toward where her bicep would be, um, kind of winding around with more twine as a sense of bracer protection. Um, I apologize to be interrupting your uh, talk, but my name is Everline, and I was sent this way by some of our tribesmen. Mm -hmm. Would Aye. you like to state your reason? Aye, lassie. <laughs> Looking for a second opinion. <laughs> it seems uh, oh. old Chosen over here has an idea of where the quarry is from these big, giant brutes. When she says tribesmen, I... Uh, oh, and I was thinking that too, um, Ian. Or Alistar. Yeah, is it Elvin? When he said, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Um, Eveline. LVN. Could be. Coincidence? Maybe. <clears throat> uh, Chosen speaks up. <clears throat> Chosen was told by Horny Lady that tribes person would escort us to Cory. Are you a part of tribes, tribe people that will escort us? 
Um, this, this horny lady, uh, are you referring to a tiefling? Those I know not know what tiefling is. Aye, that's she has big horns, we call her horny lady. Yes, uh, I would safely say that I am aware of whom you're referring to. Perfect. Lead the way. And I point to the cart uh, and have her set to steer and drive the cart. Hi, right, Charlie. Time. This might be a good time to mention. Uh, I did kind of promise them <laughs> a barrel of churros. Can Charles you... have no barrels to give. He I I, given I told three them that... to giants for passage. I, I wait, wait, wait. Are you, oh, Evelyn interrupts. Are you telling me that you made a deal with the giants? The giants came to our camp, and in fear of them attacking us, Chosen bartered our safety for Chosen Churros. <laughs> I see. Well, I'm sure we can work out an agreement for what it is that is owed to us, and she looks toward Henry as it seems that she picks up that he's the individual who made contact with her people at the yep. time of discussion. And then she looks at the rest of each of you, and she notices Marsh in the cart. Does he need aid? He needs sleep. Ah. Mm. A long rest, I see. Well, I can lead you to where this a horny lady, maybe. I just need to understand that you are friend and not foe. How we prove friend, not foe? I would hope you can do that. I, I don't know. <laughs> Chosen. We haven't killed you yet. Is that enough? <laughs> And neither did I. <laughs> it does not justify what I am. <laughs> Chosen uh, goes and um, takes off his uh, elvish, it. his elvish hammer, and um, approaches her not a, with the hammer like drawn, but like out, and just like you may take for inspection purposes. Got it. Right. Chosen hammer. Okay. Well, I don't quite. She kind of like puts her hand across it and brushes it to the side in a in a very elegant way. An elven hammer. I do not wield one, but curious as to how you a orc. She almost questions it as if she's trying to validate her opinion or her belief of what you are. How would you describe yourself in coming into this weapon? Chosen given this by weapon person in Cape Crow. So you didn't murder somebody and take it from their dead still body covered in blood? No. Chosen <laughs> remember every person he killed. No. I see. And you, she looks at Alistar. Something tells me that you're not just an old man. An old man wouldn't make it in this kind of forest. Old? I'm one of the youngest people here. <laughs> How you me I, I agree. He's bloody old. <laughs> old. I got him. Wrinkles. <laughs> oh, old days. Yeah, a little bit I'm younger than me. Yeah, this old. is such a judgmental woman. <laughs> Are you calling me judgmental in front of me without answering my question? Uh, the line, Lassie. I like you. Again? A judgmental woman? Sorry, what was it? Eveline. I know this name somehow. Have you? Have you? Uh, have you? You ever owned an apothecary by chance? <clears throat> I take no interest in such. What is the word they use for them now? Drugs. You don't need to have a use for them. I, I just I happen to know somebody with, I believe, a very similar name who uh, came from Cape Crowl and had an apothecary there. I've never Brando been to Cape Crow. I am, on the cart. I am a Looking child in a scout <laughs> to the Silver Wolf tribe. Child? How old are you? I said I am a scout in a child, as in I am one of the Silver Wolf tribe. 
yes, that's very interesting. Could you t tell me more about the Silver Wolf tribe? We have been around for years. Let me ask we go. Let's get on these cots. Henry, could you <laughs> sit behind Darko, but don't sit next to us because those are ours. <laughs> no, 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 no. She guide us. She take cart first. Chosen sit next to her. Chosen to... I love a backseat no, driver. No, 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 no. Chosen don't trust Alistar. You bore her to death. And Have she fun. asked if we friend... He bloody not... will. She asked if friend not foe. And the only way to make sure oh, we old. prove we're friend Boring. is for you to not bore her to death with story. I feel well, I very have... insulted today. I'm gonna One go more. ahead and sulk on my cot and you enjoy your ride. Interesting. Eh, this is not what I was told of in when I had originally came to assist, but you. She looks toward Darko. Mm. She stares at you briefly for some time. She is going to make an inside check. Oh boy. Roll a one. <laughs> That's not good. Huh. There's something about you. I don't quite. Hmm. Have we met before? Mm. No. I generally do not do business. Uh... <clears throat> it's your okay. kind. And what would you say that reason is? Mm. Y'all think you're way too smart for your own good. Interesting. I will guide you. But I will also keep a close eye. I assume this is the cart in which you have at my disposal? She points to the one that is not being uh, handled as of yet. In such, she uh, arranges herself among the cart, and is it Chosen who's sitting with her, or who's sitting with her? Yeah, Chosen. And Henry. And Henry's in the back with the got owl it. bears. So we got... Henry starts taking petting it. the owl bears. You got it. And then... And then the rest of the cart, the other cart is Alistar, Darko, and uh, Marsh. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, as you guys are heading what seems to be in an eastward direction, Eveline begins to discuss Eveline. with you. <laughs> Sorry. What did you say your name was? <laughs> I did not quite catch it. Who? Oh. She's referring to um, Chosen, who's sitting with her. He looks at her. And then he looks back. Mm. Alistar calls me chosen. Hmm. It's not something I'm familiar with of your kind. What would you say either, your either is first name uh, was? It's something I were chosen familiar with. But Alistar called me chosen. Hmm. And tell me that I chosen. Chosen is and chosen. Alistar is which one? Grumpy old man. I see. Grumpy and what about the other two on that cot? <laughs> the one unconscious. <laughs> Who is he? Which, sorry, um, what did she say? The unconscious man upon your cot. Why is he unconscious? Oh, that crossbow man. Crossbow man fight very hard. He and Chosen stay up most of night watching and taking care of camp. Tosin had conversation with giants with his pet Mur. Oh, we and don't forget, he's bloody old. And then Henry starts petting the Albers again. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so you speak of giants like they were here. Did you make a deal with them presently? Oh, yes. And can you describe what these giants look like? Giant lady. Uh, gray giant skin. 
grayish blue. And a devilish giant looking thing. I see. Mm -hmm. May I ask you one more question? I know that I might be overly curious, but since I am traveling, I like to understand in which one I'm with. Was this giant? Was it a she? Chosen not know what giant female male look like, but if giant was orc, I would chosen would consider female. Interesting. Well, keep an eye out. There is a giant named Truffle, a chief of sorts, and it is a she in which has been raiding our gathers as of late. No death, uh, but is loss that, of produce. Is that potentially who I was talking to? That is absolutely who you spoke with. But she didn't name herself. Mer did tell you her name. Oh. Uh, Mer did mention I, that her name was Truffle. I guess. Let me roll and. Yeah, go ahead. Roll whatever. Yeah, roll in a, in, in a history check. Let's see if you can recall. Yep. Um, yep, yep. That would probably make sense. Chosen's never one for details. You absolutely. When she says truffle, it, it kind of strikes strikes a moment for you because you're a cook and you know what truffles are, but you've never heard of someone named Truffle. And then you're like, oh, yeah. I keep that to myself. You've got it. As you guys continue onward, you do come to a clearing. Not necessarily a clearing, I apologize. You come to a beaten path that seems to be well-versed, as one could say. In doing so, I'm going to go ahead and drop you guys right here. Imagine your cards are there. I just didn't. I, I totally forgot about your guys' book. All good. I hate the, the forest, but... I do rather love the color of these leaves. The foliage is That just is gorgeous. because here we cultivate all seeds, not just what it is that's natural. We give the earth what is provided. <laughs> As you guys arrive in this opening. <laughs> 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 you see what seems to be a camp set up up ahead. She points out up ahead, and you see a common face. Rugman Jerkel. I don't know how kind his face is, but I... at least it's familiar. <laughs> Hello, I don't remember you. He looks toward Eveline. Don't worry about me, I'm just a scout. I provided them the services. And she looks past him toward uh, the next person to come out of this tent. Znaza. Yes, yes, uh, thank you. We will take it from here. Everline gives a quick curtsy of sorts. Looks to you all. Is there anything else you can do with my service? Nope. And goodbye. S uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys are all speechless. She turns around and, she walk off and disappears past the tree line. With that, you have Rugman <laughs> and Naza in front of you. I would like to investigate the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an investigation oh, check. Or give me a nature check. Give me a nature check. Joseph goes to the camp and you sits see, down. You see none other than Horny Lady, Rugman, and another tent. Chosen Alice. goes up. Huh? To... Sorry, one. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go, uh, all right. I was going to say, Chosen goes up to Rog, R uh, Jerkle. Rungan. Yeah. Rungan. Jerkle. Uh, and gives him a, a orcish arm shake of sorts. And then uh, Chosen holds out his fist to kind of give Horny Lady a, a little, like, fist bop. Absolutely. Uh, they both respond in kind. Meanwhile, we have <laughs> Alistar identifying a rock, which is a rock. But you do notice it to not just be a rock. It seems to have some kind of volcanic mineral to it. Not necessarily sulfur, 
but some kind of vein within it that produces a ever so slight heat. So if it can if it can retain this gotha piece bit. Okay. I try slapping it. <laughs> Do you slap the rock to break a piece off? It's not gonna happen. There's Give me no a slap. Give me a slap. Alright. Like a strength <laughs> check or would would that be an attack? Yeah, give me a strength a strength a strength a strength uh strength, uh, strength roll with your proficiency would make it an attack. Any proficiency in strength? Was it saving? No. Okay. No, just a regular check or a regular like uh, roll. Yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, I see. With your proficiency? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, not, what? What would be? What's your proficiency? Three or four right now? I'm gonna call chosen. Can you break off a piece of this rock? <laughs> Bring your hammer! No. no. Darko! Darko! <laughs> what? I need you to hit this rock. With, with my hand? Your, um... Your, uh... Lantern. <laughs> You want me to hit, 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 hit the rock with the lantern? Why? And let me just do it with my stupid wooden stick. How was that going <laughs> to <do it? laughs> I hit it with my staff this time. All right, give me a, a staff attack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What exactly are you trying to do? You see Alistar slapping the rock and then pull out his own wooden staff and go and smack it on it. Are you trying to make the rock do something? I want to break off a piece. I, I need to investigate if it can retain heat. As as you as you're smacking and whacking at this rock, you kind of hear like uh, you hear Naza, and she kind of clears her voice or her throat. Sorry, and she's like, <clears throat> "If I may, we have samples in our camp. Do approach. Coming. I will investigate further. And uh." Why is Marsh in such a slumber? Has he been staying up late again? Chosen and crossbow men stay up most of night protecting camp. <clears throat> Chosen pass out after confrontation with Giant. It would seem he did too. This man, as old as he is, never gets the proper rest. Well... For you, Alistair, as I assure you, check out of my tent. You will find an assortment of these, I don't know, rocks, stones, geodes, whatever it is you wish to call them. I don't know anything about it, but Rungim insists that they might have something to do with the crevice ahead of us. Wonderful, wonderful. We need to learn more. I use my, <laughs> I want to use the inspiration to Henry, how do you rock. inspire him? <laughs> I already did. Uh, I just started singing, give me a break, give me a break, give me a break of this big ass rock. <laughs> Starko provides a pitten and a hammer for Alistar to go freely at his own desire. Naza is just like, I don't understand men. They are a uh, selective type. Feel free to use the proper tools. All right, lassies, never understand what it is for a mate to break a big-ass rock. Come on, mate, break it. This is a learning opportunity. The more we Henry know just starts chanting, the break the rock, break the rock, break the rock. <laughs> Do you attempt to break the rock? I will attempt to break it with the pitten and the hammer. Give me another strength check. Doing saving throw. I should probably check. Oof. 
You Golly. are you hit the pitten and the pitten just reflects off and bounces off of the rock and falls to the floor and it's like you couldn't even get a stake in. It just is reflective through your every effort. What? Who in the hell taught you how to swing a hammer book, man? Give me that. I'm just going to grab the hammer back from him, and I'm just going to take, like, a fat swing at the pit and just try and break (laughs) off a chunk of the rock. All right, give me a strength check. (laughs) This is either going to go really well or really good. Good luck. (laughs) In this episode, the gang fights a rock. (laughs) Oh, my God. I can't do it. You see Dark open up. Ping! 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 He's giving it a couple <laughs> swings in. And even he is not getting a chisel off. Naza interrupts. Bro. If, if, if I may. We did not achieve our not. temples by smacking a rock. <laughs> so dumb. Hey, let me investigate the samples. Enough of this foolery. Again, they are within my tent. You may have your means as necessary. Hey, Daco, let me have a try. Well, all right, oh. here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, strength, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this bloody rock is fucking tough, mate. <laughs> you just kind of see uh, Rungam just kind of uh, rubbing his head and almost rock, like a apparently. like a like a stressing situ- like a stressing point. Like, man, these these guys just aren't listening to us. <laughs> it's not the way. <laughs> it's just like an awe of determination to break this rock. Um, with that, you guys see. From the third tent, a tabaxi arrive, uh, come out. His name is Keith. He is one of the uh, individuals, or one of your guys' uh, retainer. Retainer, right? Yeah. Yes. Hello, I am uh, Keith. I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting you all once before. I was given this task, and it has been a not as fruitful event. We lost a few. It is now just us three. What is it in which we sneak at this crevice? Do we lose um, yes. the... You do the lizard folk? Lizard guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chosen falls to his knees in hearing this and then prays for... Zilkin was his name. Zil- Zilkin's uh, grand return to his heavens, his wall a hall of heroes, essentially. Okay. For being a brave warrior and helping us fight the the spiders. As you go about, um, <laughs> as you go about <laughs> uh, respecting him, uh, you see Keith and Naza go. Uh, well, Keith Keith responds first. Did you by chance know this individual in more of a personal matter? You talking to me? Yes. No. Those are just giving respect to Zilkin because Zilkin helped us. I'm sure he would have risked tower. He helped <clears throat> us survive. He went into the crevice ahead. He kind of points, and as he does, he points in this general direction. Our trip was abruptly interrupted with his death. Naza ordered us to get out. You see Naza kind of nodding her head in uh, affirmative. And, well, we are now here. This is, uh... What is it that took Zilkin? If I could tell you what I saw, you wouldn't believe me. Naza did not see this, nor Ron Gamp, but I was there with him. 
Rosen saw something terrifying. As did I, deep within this crevice, about 120 feet, there we were. You see the fire of the magma from the ground itself rise. And then what I saw was a giant with six limbs pummeling down upon us. I too hit. He kind of like pulls up his sleeve and he shows you his his arm, which is heavily bruised. Like whatever the hell it was, it hit it just in one full impact in the, in the entire arm. But I made it out. I was able to use my claws to scry way up and climb through the pit. But Sithkin cried out and said, Run! Run, Keith! For what I did. This was never my intent. But I knew that I couldn't save him, and nor could I stop the being that was there. I want the rest, and we have not come back. It's been two days. This same creature we saw by the tribe or village of sorts. Last yesterday, I did not see one leave here, nor the one we faced. But I also cannot say that there are not more openings in the ground in which we found here elsewhere. Are we to go to this crevice and get this precious stone? Naza interrupts. We were given instruction, yes, to gain, gather, and achieve. But this is a bit more of a trivial task of whether or not we all want to die in the process. I've already gone one place before, maybe twice, and I personally am not looking to die again. But yeah, are, these really rocks... <laughs> are these rocks sufficient? Before. I'll tell you about what that another time. I about the rocks. I was doing an investigation on the rocks. Did you do an investigation on the rocks? I want to. Do it. And I'm going to be using my inspiration. Oh. A... You definitely need that. 1v8. Need something good. Nice, nice. 20 flat. Run again. Mr. Jerkle comes from behind you. It would seem that you made it, but uh, you're looking at the wrong thing, sir. <clears throat> Allow me to present the evidence in which we found. He pulls out some parchments. I am here to learn about these minerals. <laughs> As you say that. And you put your hand out to discern it. He give he hands into your he puts into your hand his his notes, and you see them scribbled in common, readable. Um, you know, not clean, but readable. They go about talking about a unique surface effect to this stone. When shaved, chiseled, or broken, it turns into an ash type substance. It does not keep its hardened state. It's as if it softens and it breaks molecularly. Then they added it to some substances of magic or arcana and notice that it does not amplify but it weakens any substance that has yet to hit it. They have tried fire, water, thunder, and lightning. Have you tried Earth? Interesting findings. <laughs> yes, try Earth. <laughs> I forgot some you. <laughs> you, um, good sir Alistar, from your as, as you're looking over the notes and then in you know in checking it out yourself, you come to a little different in findings outside of obviously full on experimental, but from what you can see based off of uh the notes and from what you visually are taking in and your own investigation. 
you notice that the vein that's giving off a small, what looks to give off a small hint of light is not of an active state. It is because something inside of this stone is still in this in, in that volcanic hot lava gesture. Um, these rocks are not broken open, nor are these rocks from another rock from what you can tell. They must be of this size found. It does not seem as if they broke shards or anything as the veins seem to go from one end to the other and connect. Oh, now that you think about it, as you kind of consider it, the three rocks in front of you that they had as samples all have natural coursing veins with no break point. If you were to stick yourself outside of the tent and you look at the rest of the rocks as you kind of consider what you saw at the first one, that too had a whole system in which it, it in its own has been undisturbed. Almost, almost living. They, they're they're self sufficient. They can't be separated. Very interesting. I mean, it's uh, it's intriguing, yes, but it is not the heart of the problem in which we brought ourselves to. It would seem these rocks are edible. Move. Eat with first. Only water. <laughs> By the creature below. You mean the bullet? I cannot speak for the bullet. I have not seen that species out here in the forest. But what it is that slayed Zilkin, it seemed to have consumed these rocks. You think it is something that lives particularly in this area that you have decided to camp in, or is it something that is uh, throughout the forest? You mean the species that it's speaking of? Yes. Uh, it is in a crevice that is in a pit just up ahead that you guys have yet to it visit. It lives in the crevasse. Um, they don't... So, Rugman goes, uh, we cannot say that it is of living there, but it is found there. We did not find a nest, nor did we disturb one, to our knowledge, but it found us. Tell me a bit more about your encounter. Uh, how strong are we talking about this creature? Are there ways that we could perhaps peek around it, or ways that we could... I and uh... Naza were not present during this time. It was ah. Keith and Zilkin. We'll be speaking with Zilkin and. Perhaps Keith can give us more information. You can head out of the tent, but he's outside in the, the tent. Darko, what are you doing? Yep. I am currently um, walking around investigating kind of these tents because the elf lady brought us here, and I'm still kind of like unsure of where we are, why we're here in the first place kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, so can I do like an investigation on on the area, see if there's anything more or less unusual about where we are currently? Yeah, give me a general investigation check as you pursue, pursue, purview the area around you and okay. check it all out. Ooh. You do notice something. For starters, this path was made, not by accident, but almost as if something was dragged here through here multiple times to create this barren aspect of a trail. Second thing you notice is on the rocks. On almost every single rock in this area, there is an etching, almost as if something has been telling you see tallies from three to five, all the way up to six, uncertain of what it means. Bookman, look at these rocks here. What do you make of this? These look to be uh, right there, eating some berries. Just uh, oh, get over here. Top of the berries, goddammit. I don't go well with my mushrooms. I'll tell you a story about some fucking etches. I'm fine. I'm coming to your etches. And you don't like berries. I happen to like a fruit salad in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> What's with 
Captain Henry Fantastic. has a um, he has two arms form around him. What do you choose to do with them, Henry? Right now, nothing. I okay. just do it. Activate it. <laughs> Got it. You activate it. Intimidation Perfect. tactic. Everyone sees Henry kind of pop out with these two extra uh, spectral arms, uncertain of the purpose or reason why, but he does it. Darko. Cast magic, or I cast minor illusions so that I also have two, <laughs> two ghost arms. <laughs> cast, Alistar cast his minor illusion to replicate alone, Henry. Henry's vision. <laughs> you got some nice ghost arms there, mate. Not as powerful as mine, though. I flex them. <laughs> so impressed. And I use minor illusion, and I have four ghost arms. You continuously, the power. you continuously upgrade your own well-being and self <laughs> as you go about it all. Um, Darko, as you're looking at these markings, it reminds you about something. It reminds you to the same individual in which you claim to be the reason for that odd ritualistic stone site. Mm. It's something they used to do. And it wasn't something they did in the sense of guidance. It was something they did to make aware to others. You imagine this to be some kind of ciphering code. Okay. Um, kind of like something for people to follow, more or less? Those who understand it to find. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming I've seen this code before, yes. So I know I should generally know how to decipher it? You know how to decipher it. It's been some time. Give me an intelligence okay. check. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Yeah, pick up two letters to letter I and letter K. Letter I and letter K. You you for some reason are struggling with the rest. It's you've got the I, you've got the K, and you're like, I know this. I just I just can't tell so, you it, so theoretically, because Alistair has a higher intelligence, if I give him the I and the K through this through the cipher, will he? Is there a possibility that he could be able to work out the rest of it? If you're willing to give him, to, if you're willing to expose this secretive communication, sure. Hmm. Mm. Because I already invited him over here, so I'm just kind of like, Alistair, I gotta ask you a question between you and I. As you go to ask Alistair a question, uh, he catches Henry trying to pick up something out of his, off of his person. Hey, I didn't even roll my slide of hand. No, I didn't even roll my slide of hand. hand. <laughs> if you get a nat 20, you're good. <laughs> Let's see. Henry, give me, you gotta get an ad 20. Uh, even with my plus nine, you had to roll nat 20. Yeah. Oh, no, even that just misses you. up to 22. Oh, no. Damn. <clears throat> Your does catch. Hands away from me, you. <laughs> oh, it was, it was a good attempt. <laughs> Which pocket were you going for? I only have a thousand of them. Oh, I, I couldn't decide. That was me problem. Anyways. <laughs> We'll probably call him a sane. Darko asking you something. Mm. How do you feel about these woods here that we're in? I, I feel like we should leave them soon. Mm. I don't like the mm -hmm. trees. They all speak and they attack me. I don't like the bushes. They, they're thorny <laughs> and they, they spike mm. you. I yep, don't yep. like how much they hide the enemies. I don't like... Fair <laughs> <laughs> point, fair point. Okay, I, I think you proved my point. By the way, if there was a way to uh, <clears throat> rid these woods, 
of this uh, <clears throat> plague, curse, bullshit, however you want to call it. Call it would you feel it would be worth it, or should you? would you think, like, mm, if we leave, it's not our problem? Our problem? We don't live here. But Could is there gold be? involved? I mean, probably not. Well, <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> is there booty we can find? Hmm. Um, can I call, uh, like, can I, like, contact Zephyr at this point? Yeah, you can reach out to him. Mm. Hey, uh, little demon buddy, I got a question for you real quick. <laughs> yes, you've summoned me. The peers are our friend. Has returned. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> you see... We could rid these woods of this of our friend here, but uh, <clears throat> my friends are, well, let's just say they are motivated by one thing and uh, one thing only, and that be that be a goal. Now, is there a way that we could accomplish both things here? If you're asking me, if I know where a gold cachet may be, I do not. As for the woods, it is a forest, you know, but none the matter. Oh, I see. You only when you bring me over do I ever get to see what you're doing. Oh, the markings, the etchings on the rocks. He right. knows what it says. He knows that you're present. He feels your ever varying light. It's as if you are. The good nature, and he is the evil. And so if you I went wrong, through. What did you say? If you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> he said, kind of ironic. What did you say? Oh. That you're the good and he's the bad. Oh. oh. Mm. Mm. I mean, you know him. So, kind of. Mm, he's kind of a piece of shit. Anyways, um, so he went through all of this work just to tell me that he knows that I'm here. Uh, typical. typical. Yes. Typical in your continuous dispute and feud with those who are no longer, I would once say it, your ally. But you have me, good friend. Don't you worry, I'll never betray a soul bounty like you. <laughs> I need to figure out how to make this, how to uh, make expunging this man profitable. Because, you know, these woods, like, how often am I, I? It's been 20 years since I've been here. What the hell do I care if he lives out here? But you don't remember 20 years and you still don't recall. Like, there's a lot this old mind forgets these days. Well, uh, there's only so many times you try to kill your own friend. Friend? Well. Follower, cultists, those who believe, they see you do, it's like a monkey of things. Yes, but, you know, he is one now, too. We are one and the same. In this feud. It continues to go on. Here I am, living my own life, trying to create myself again. And what is he doing? Stewing in the past. Typical. Typical. Well, I mean, think about it. Everybody but you die twice from expunging two separate cults. And now you discover one lived, particularly one who was your understudy. Are you calling me out right now? I find it curious. Feel... We are still bonded by a contract that you never completed. Yet, who must he be contracted with? Hmm? 
That's a good question. Probably me. And what are you providing to him? Nothing. That's what I can't figure out. I guess me being here, I am providing him something. But as soon as I leave, I provide him nothing. And how is this leaving been going about? Terribly. Terribly. You see, my friends here, they are motivated, like I said, by gold, by gems, by all things value. So that's why I have to figure out how I can rid this creature from these woods while at the same time making it profitable for them. And here I am, looking at etches on an apparently unbreakable rock. Well, and I cannot figure out for the life of me how we will make this profitable, make this worthwhile for this team here to, you know, do our dirty work. The quarry before you. Well, that that is profitable. However, I have recently heard that a humogon has resided within and even more than a friend. What is that? On the side note, what is that? You have, oh, you, sorry, Darko, mm -hmm. for a humagon. A humagon is a centaur who had made a pact with something beyond itself and has okay. allowed itself to become a monstrosity. Okay. And that's, valuable, are... and that's valuable to us? No, no, no. He's telling you that oh. the mind is valuable, but mm -hmm. it is currently the home of a humagon that is responsible for also killing Zilkin. Mm. Humagons, okay. too. You've never fought one. You've never come into contact with one, but you have heard that they are like double binding uh, beings that don't complete their contract and in such are cursed by the devil in which they made the pact into a humagon, which okay. are like a uh, cavernous version of a minotaur of sense. Okay. Um... Hmm. Now, would Zephyr happen to know? Darko is absolutely talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> I take, I take a couple steps back. Like my eyes are probably rolled in the back of my head too while I'm talking to myself. It's probably super creepy. Like, because I probably just like cut out mid conversation with Alistair too and just like started talking to myself. Yeah, he's. I, he's I'm, uh, you guys hear his course. end of the conversation. I've seen this before. Yeah, you guys absolutely hear his end of the conversation, but don't hear wh wh what's responding to him. But he seems to be having a a a uh, in a very descriptive, informative converse. As he seems to understand what's going on, he's like, "Mm-hmm, mm-hmm," and then he goes about responding. Um, Henry so... had a. Uh, <laughs> uh, a member of his crew once who also did this and knew things that he d shouldn't know. So <clears throat> he doesn't so, agree with us. So I'm going himself. to, um, this is the brave we rode. I, I'm going to, I'm just going to tell Zephyr really quick before I end this. Like, um, mm -hmm. I think the only way we're going to get this to work is I'm going to tell them that, uh, these woods, the, the curse in these woods needs to be destroyed in order for us to find the full bounty of this quarry here. How does that sound as an idea? Well... We hear you, Darko. <laughs> oh yeah, can they hear everything or am I like mumbling to myself? They just, they hear you like, going about going about conversing to yourself. Like, oh, it's like a full, oh, I didn't know it was like okay. full combo. <laughs> Like, I thought I was, like, mumbling to myself. Yeah. I mean, anyone next to you can absolutely hear your mumbling. Oh, fuck. We're all hearing this. Oh, I'll start oh, things too crazy. I think that there's something going on. Okay, well, then I'll, I'm going to say it. Can, can I try and say I, Sorry. Can I try and say that a little more cryptically, or is it too late? Go for it. I'll give you the opportunity. Okay. Um, the woods. The woods, is it attached to the quarry? It would seem that it is all one and the same. I fear that there is a missing environment below. Thank you. I have all I need to know. 
I am always here, contract buddy. <laughs> and then my eyes are gonna like roll back properly in my head, and I'm gonna—is Alistair still standing? Are you still standing there? Yes, yes. We're all yeah, circling you. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> not expecting an audience. <clears throat> mm. Well, I, uh, D squared, do you talk to your god too? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how do you think all of this comes to be, chosen big, big fella? I don't just conjure up these things out of nowhere. We all got gods. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to Chosen's god? I try. It's a very powerful god, I must say. He doesn't like to talk to me. He likes to talk through you, you see. Oh. Was that who Darko was trying to talk to just now? No, definitely not. So, problem <laughs> is... <laughs> These woods are definitely cursed, if you haven't already been able to tell. By the giants, the Fucking whacking trees, the acupuncture bushes, all that kind of shit. And these rocks, believe it or not, have something to do with it. Now, we cannot get the full bounty of this quarry or whatever we're after here until we rid these woods of the curse. And all we have to do is find the person who follow these clues on these rocks here until we find the person who laid this curse, and then we have free access to the quarry. Best way to solve curse. <laughs> Burn the forest. Mm. Alistar, an agreement? I'll be the first to throw a firebolt. <laughs> uh, my, my, <laughs> if you uh, don't beat uh, me to it, well, those in might get just rid of the get curse. Them. Darko's God aside. Darko's God what? aside, mate. You remember the last time we tried to burn a forest? Mm. Almost successful. Nope. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, hey, mate. It was not successful. You oh. scraped me from the bottom, bottom of a, a, a rock. A giant rock. Joseph mm -hmm. is not participating in that fight. The clues are in these rocks. Toss now, sacred flame. I'm not saying that the man responsible for this bullshit is not in the quarry, because he very well might be. If I if I laid a curse on the forest and I was going to hide somewhere, yeah, maybe I might hide in a quarry. So we can go down there. We can look around, see all the valuables, get rid of the curse. And then take what we want and go build, you know, a churro factory or whatever the hell we want to do. How did you say valuables? There are plenty of valuables in the quarry, my good friend, especially this one. That was the original reason why Chosen and Chosen's crew came. Do you not remember this? No, I don't remember anything. Henry just <laughs> kind of does this like Chosen. That crew. was the whole reason or this travel was to go to this quarry and bring valuable back to increase enterprise. Well, that's a good idea. You should have told us that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cloudy just forced us to do this. I don't recall. Yeah. <laughs> I was just following I was just following you guys into this shitty forest. <laughs> no, crossbow men and Told us with and what's crossbow man's uh, uh that one that no the circus dude oh, oh Mark uh, um, uh uh Jesus um Goral I think yeah Goral yeah Goral yeah. lace yes yeah Goral yeah uh, crossbow man's uh circus buddy Goral <laughs> said. Yes. There are treasures in quarry, and Clouty want us to do this. Our reward was treasures in quarry. That's a good idea. I 
Go get me my money. Oh, star. You, because of your natural intelligence, you also recall that your guys' main purpose of arriving was to help barricade the tribes, um, the, the village's home, in which they would assist you in acquiring this quarry. Ignore it. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 now, do, now, um, does Darko have any way of like tracking these little breadcrumbs that <clears throat> are more or less like being left out here, like all these etchings on the rocks? Like, or am I just gonna ha- kind of have to be observant along the way as we're traveling through um, to the quarry no. to try and? So when you hit up Zephyr and he kind of let you know that he knows and he's aware, mm-hmm. um, he kind of gave you that assertive sense that. You are now aware that you are being hunted. Um, not you can decide it however you wish. There is okay. something afoot here with this particular individual in regards to you. Yes. Okay. However, for you, in the sense of tracking it, you can sense his magic signature. You do know of items in which may have been on this person's body, in which you can potentially mm-hmm. locate. Whether or not you have that spell, or whether or not you have it available to you now, would be the only setback. Okay, but if somebody amongst you or your party had means of tracking, following, or some sort, you would know how to go about acquiring that sense of information. Do we have anybody that tracks anything? I don't think we do, because that's like a. Or wait, Marsh is a is is Marsh a ranger? No, he's not, right? No, he's a fighter. He's a fighter. Hmm. Shit. Well, uh, okay. Well, I have a different plan then. <clears throat> so, while we're walking, uh, I shall remain separated from the crew at a reasonable distance, mind you, but separated nonetheless. Now, the reason why is because our friend here who has put the curse on these woods does not, uh, <clears throat> care for me too much we could say we have a a long history uh a long beef that is a story for a different time however so he is uh appears to be from what i can tell actively looking for us now and more specifically probably looking for me so i will use myself volunteer myself mind you let's remember this for later uh volunteer myself as bait and I shall separate myself from the crew as we are walking. And I shall alert the crew if anything shall come up. And if you would all be so kind as to help me in that time, we can rid this wo- these woods of this curse at that point. How does that sound? Fine, mate. <laughs> but he well to me. No risk to the, to the crew other than ye. Chosen lets you know that there's no need to let them know. (laughs) (laughs) You're good. You continue to handle this person searching for you. From what I understand, they're not searching for us. They're searching for you. Well, you know, (laughs) collateral damage, as they say. Meanwhile, as this is going on, Henry was showing Alistar the clear rocks in which he had acquired. Alistar quickly identifies them as quartz, which he is not wrong. Not wrong! Alistar wasn't just lying. He knows everything. <laughs> Alistar the Great. Get bullshit out of my ass, would I? No. Oh, an educated guess. It's from my years at the Spire. Well, I didn't have that many years at the Spire Academy, did I? No, I had years at the Spire Academy. <laughs> <laughs> all my education, I can tell you the mineral in your hand and many things about it. <laughs> then I, I don't really care about. that much, mate. I just want to give you these rocks so you get off the other bloody rocks. <laughs> Fair enough. Give me the rocks and I'll stop talking about the other rocks. Oh, hi. And they're yours, mate. <laughs> and some all to them. About quartz. Meanwhile, Chosen is directing you guys to the valuable. As you guys head off in that direction, are you guys ready to go in that direction? Yep. So yep. Naza and Rongem 
kind of lets you know that, you know, well, we'll uh, show you the way. Let us uh, take you yonder. Yes, horny lady, come. Dirk will come. We need support. As they start bringing you ahead further, <clears throat> you see this huge crevice. Now, I don't have that immediately <coughs> available on the scene for you, but theater of the mind. You see this huge crevice, like almost like a chasm of a fracture, like a fissure was created here. It reaches about 30 to 40 or so feet from your side to the other side, in which land would then meet. In between that, it goes straight down, at least another 30 or so feet down before the first ledge is located. The first ledge, from what you guys can immediately see from where you stand, looking directly down, is probably big enough to hold Alistar or Henry, based off of your guys' size. Maybe even Marsh, if he wasn't incapacitated at the moment. The next series, which only Chosen and Darko would have an opportunity to see, give me a perception check as you guys look below. Perceptive. Narco is just staring. Chosen, however, you see that about 65 feet would be the second ledge. Much more berth. You guys would all be able to stay at that ledge, but you notice from what you've been picking up, even though you guys can slide all the way down to these ledges, there is no immediate path that would take them down. Do I see a like a potential way forward based on what you just said though? So you have no clue where or how these guys before you, um, Team B, got supposedly got down there. You're not even certain where Zilkin died. Mm -hmm. Naza and Rungan were not a part of that, as they kind of just accompanied you guys to come and look down upon the quarry. I what you to... see, Dozen, real quick, yeah. Yeah. in the sense of traversing below, mm -hmm. you imagine if there was something or someone on the top end holding down a rope, mm -hmm. the rest can safely go down. Mm. I turn to Naza and Jerkle. Chosen, not sure how anyone... Even as nimble as you, horny lady, could get up and down this. Well, that is why I didn't go. go. And that oh. is also why he didn't go. And she points at Rungan, and Rungan was like, I too was wise and uh, knowledgeable that I, this was be lack of befitting for me. However, Zilkin was prideful. Said he could do it. So me and Naza held the rope as he and, well, Keith climbed himself down with his claws. But Zilkin went down with the rope. We never had to pull him back up. Hmm. Alistar, could you do your Earth movie thing to make steps for us on the way down? to make it easy for us to go up and down this area in case of emergency. Would be we happy can to run attempt up it. and down. That'd be handy. I don't know if it'll work because it's supposed to be for like loose ground, but it's probably wrong. I, I think we should try. Tell me to try. The immediate ground around you, you can dig down until you get to about a couple solid stones. You could probably go about seven-ish feet. That will reduce it to 23 feet to the first ledge. Do it again. <laughs> no, like that's where you hit rock. That's where you hit stone uh, and you can't like break no it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could uh, do a cast on the stone itself, but that'll only get us another five feet. Mm. 
it's just like a super steep ledge. Is that kind of pretty much? And then so we just we made it so that now the ledge is twenty three feet versus call it from where you stand. Correct. Still a lot. Okay. What are we trying to get to? So if we got the ledge, what's down there? Is there a cavern? In it's the cavern. It's a cavern. It's a yeah, there lost. is a cavern base. Uh, the cavern base, oh. assumably, is at least a hundred to hundred and twenty feet. The first ledge is now 23 feet, which it will easily hold um, Alistar, Henry, or Marsh. And then the second ledge, about 65 feet. Now it would be about, what, 52-ish feet? Or, no, not 52-ish, whatever, 50-something feet. Um, would be are we trying to get feet, to the right? bottom of the crevice, be, or are we trying to get to hold everyone. the wall on the ledge? Well... If you Either get to the wall, you still the... have to go down or travel side to side to find another really way. And to go all the way to the bottom of the crevice. Pretty much. We're trying to go to 120 feet down. We don't care about yes. it. But the ledges will help us efficiently. If you go 30 feet, you then have to go another 30 feet and then 60 feet. Correct. Okay. Um. Let's jump! Have jump! Jerko! <laughs> Jerko, do you have anything to help us get down here? Well, the reason why I didn't go down was because I had nothing but rope. Rope is good. Yes, but it well, does not allow us to save anybody who is holding on to it. Why don't you just turn Henry into, like, a fucking bird or something like that? He can fly down there. Right. That works. 74. <laughs> Always changing me, mate. <laughs> Never mind, do you, Henry? If you like, I can go down with you. I can turn into a, you know, a gaseous form of some kind and follow right. you along. You turn that makes you feel better. Got it. <laughs> Could we turn... Captain Man into a big bird and have him fly us down? Oh, yeah. Is that a thing? Uh, hey, look, like a condor? Turn him into a giant eagle. I'm not or certain if he can carry us. But... If you turn one of them into a giant eagle, I think the eagle can take one person at a time, if that is something you wish to do. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> being a giant eagle. <laughs> oh my god it goes from being a giant ape to a giant eagle <laughs> do you do that? I say do it, I, say do it. <laughs> I, I just want to hear if he's cool with it if not, I'll ask Joe well, mate, are we sure this is the only way? I mean, you got There's a better a idea, Cap? do you have 120 feet of rope? Um, uh, well, <laughs> mates, we don't need 120 feet of rope. What we need no problem, is we many 50. of us to have about 60 feet of rope. I got 50. I hold on, let me check. Uh, I have another, mates, I have another 50. Does anyone else have any rope? No, I might have rope. Joseph is just saying no because he wants Henry to turn into a bird. <laughs> Actually, don't have any rope on me. <laughs> Run, Gambros. Well, you can use my, uh, the rope outfit. that we had left over, which is about 45 feet. Well, if you, do you know how to tie? He looks at Rum. Chosen looks at Rum uh, Jerkle and just glares at him. Just in a very <laughs> disapproving manner. <laughs> I apologize if I cannot be of more assistance, but I, I'm only good when the staff is doing the work. Do you tie knots? I could hold a rope. Can you turn we someone? We can all a hold giant a rope. Eagle? Rum gam. I cannot transform others. I can more or less allow them to bend to my will. Can you tie a knot? I can tie a knot. Tie these ropes into a knot while you hold them. Uh, mate, I can of tie course. a knot. I've been on a ship for 
Plus, I mean, I, we don't need a ship the not. one person who has not skills. <laughs> <laughs> we don't right. need a ship I call the best knots, like forty different types of knots. All right. Well, you can die <laughs> not then. Give me a sighting <laughs> check. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. I'm gonna As Alistar checks this person, he realizes that he might have rope on him. In other words, you have rope on you. <laughs> Henry ties some very savant knots. Very impressive. You guys all see him just going about it. Oh. He's like, you loop it, you loop it, you pull it, you turn it, and then you twist it. And everyone got lost in the twist. And then he loops it three more times. And it is just, it looks pretty damn solid. That does use an overall seven feet of your rope, but you still have plenty of enough to get to the bottom. Well, shit. Um, you, why don't you say something from the beginning, Cap? God damn. How much extra uh, rope do we have to make it down? Uh, you guys got just about 10 or so. Okay. Um, Henry's going to tie additional knots uh, like every five feet for grabbing to make it to where it's easier to descend down the rope. Okay. You add additional little like knots for them to kind of put their feet upon or to use it for their hands as they descend in a uh, singular ladder sense. It Do doesn't you guys work. throw the doesn't rope in uh, or are you guys just holding the rope up? I don't know. Rumgam said he's really good at holding rope. He did say that. The, Here, on the crevice, you're looking at the closest thing to wrap it around about five to six feet so it's not super far if you wanted to rope ro uh, tight around something outside of run gam or not as a whole uh story. yeah henry would insist on that yeah we'll roll uh, we'll continue with the go ahead mold earth around rope to hold rope in place right there it's kind of like putting rope in in the ground Bill. even better is there a tree around here yeah there's a there's a tree easy you know do it though. All okay. right, drum gun. All you do is you hold the ro hold the rope and put it around the tree, and now you've created a fulcrum. It can hold more weight, and you have less weight to resist. I will follow your instruction. He takes the rope after you've already wrapped it around the tree and kind of like steads fast. But we must still put, push the rest down. Push the rest of the rope down? Yeah, like, have you guys tossed it into the hole yet? Into the crevice? Uh, no, at this point, I, I guess Henry would walk up and just toss it down. As you do. <sighs> oh, God. You guys hear it make contact with the floor below? Alistar and Henry can't see the bottom. Darko can. Chosen can. Chosen sees it a bit more clear than Darko. It's at the bottom. I I'll go first. Big, big thumbs up. Um, no, Henry goes first. Henry is really a savant with climbing ropes, so. All right. Be my guess. How far do you want to go, Henry? To the first uh, ledge, second ledge, or to the bottom? He's going to go just straight down to the bottom to, like, anchor the rope. His idea is to make it to where it's not wobbling at all. Uh, so that way, like, they have an easier descent. Like a tense. I'm sorry? To tense the rope? Yeah, exactly. Got it. You kind of turn around, do a little deal, and fly on down the rope quickly as you just... As... You make it about halfway through. Give me a perception check. You guys see Henry with ease going about this rope, not even seeming to give off a struggle. Let's see what he may see. Mind you, you're going in there. Might it's disadvantage because it's dark. All right, perception. Should have let a person with some light go down there first. You can uh, dancing light it. Oh, that's true. He does have the lights. Mm-hmm. Okay. Henry, you feel pretty damn good about being safe so far. 
You head the rest of the way. Come on down! You get to the bottom, and as you do, you see in your immediate surroundings, like a veiny glow along the floor in both directions. It's a bit warmer than you anticipated. You're not sure if it's because the wind doesn't make it down here, or if because something is emitting this warmth. As you yell up to the rest of the crew and holler them to come on down with you, they hear your echo. What do you guys do? Well, I was, I'm was. i going to be on the rope like I was going to be on a right after cat. You got so it. Like, I would already be on my way down. Darko, you're going to have to give me an acrobatics check. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for this. <laughs> Darko holds on the rope and it's a bit wobbly because you're a bigger dude. Uh, yeah. Henry's holding on to it, but it's a it's like a cool what eighty to ninety feet that are not held, you know, like tensed or barred anywhere. It's just the bottom's holding it, the top's holding it, everything in the middle is loose, so to speak. Mm-hmm. As you go down, you're you're feeling uncomfortable. You get halfway and you look and you see it's just Henry down there. There's no other kind of beings or living entities. And then you kind of mumble to yourself as you continue on further. And as you do, give me a perception check. About 15 feet above Henry. You hear some kind of rocks or debris scatter against the ground below. You look, and you assume it was just you or someone further up above, like Alistar's feet slipping in the sand and knocking down a little bit of chunk change of rocks here and there. You make it to the bottom, Henry. I mean, sorry, Darko. You make it to the bottom with Henry. You can see, Darko. Do Mm -hmm. Do either of you wish to emit any kind of light? As soon uh, as yeah, a, I, have, I have my torch. Darko right. hits, it, hits the ground. Uh, Henry's not going to, but he, what he's going to do is slap him on the back and be like, good on you, Mike. Uh, send down the next. As Darko emits his torch, the entire area lights up within 45 or so feet from the shadows and the general brightness. Alistar and Chosen, as you guys look down, give me perception checks. Let us see what we Can I look into the crevasse? How screwed are we? You're looking great. <laughs> my, my, look. my point of view. And he sees you guys safe and sound. Everything is as according. Alistar, you don't look directly down. For whatever reason, you look off to the right. You then look off to the left, and then immediately back to the right. You could have sworn you thought you saw something. Who goes next? Something moving on the slip side. Is Marsh technically with us right now? He is considered unconscious. Mm, Okay. I'll go. Okay. I need an acrobatics check from you. Of course. Great skill in acrobatics as a wizard. You too, as Darko, sh- shamble your way down. Yeah, it's not the it's not the smoothest. As you make it halfway, you wonder how the hell you're gonna get back up. <laughs> but <laughs> you can the rest of the way. Physical education was not one of my specialties. You make it to the bottom with red in hands, still functioning, uh, but a little more worn for tear than what you're used to. Use Chosen. Presto to make my clothes cold so that I can put my hands on the cold. You got it. To kind of chill them out. Chosen, do you join them? I give uh, I give a, another good look down there to see see what I see. Give me one more check. I do believe I saw something moving on the uh, the cliff side above us. As you look down, chosen, you look to the right. You see an opening 
against the, the on the other side of the gap on the you know on the other end about 40 or 40 to 45 feet or so about on the second wedge so about 65 feet down you see an opening in the wall as if like it was tunneled out not a clean break but definitely something was tunneled but you don't see anything there current but you do see a burrow So like a, like where the bullets, I guess, were. Yeah. It could be all kinds of things. Who knows? Bullet is fresh on your mind, though. Yeah, the big old gopher. mountain man with full of six limbs is what's on my mind. Uh, I look to Naza. Naza. Horny lady. Are you yes. joining? What can I do to assist? Care to join? And I point down. She looks back across the way toward the cart where Marsh rests. If I didn't go in his place, then I guess... I guess I wouldn't be a good friend. Chosen agree. Your turn. <laughs> can I... Gives a nod, and let's give her a check. One second. And she does an acrobatic. She just, with elegance, kind of Nimbly. hangs over and just almost quietly, Alistar and Darko and Henry, by the time you realize it, Naza is already upon you both, all three of you, and kind of... <clears throat> no, and the is hell? present. She the looks up and waves you? toward you, Chosen, to join. Before I, I join, I make sure the... Um, whatever the cat man is near. Heath? Yeah. Him and Rugman are uh, well. Are, Keith is kind of like between where the where the base camp is and where you guys are, kind of like keeping an eye on Marsh and the rest of the okay. tent. Even though it's not far, it's like thirty feet away. But okay. Rugman within is within holler and distance. Him. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, good. Um, I I make one more. So when Nas again, like it just during disturbances of them getting down, I make another percept. I make another check just to see if anything else comes up. Okay. Give me one more check. It may not change anything, but looks the same. You're looking down, and you're kind of getting an idea that this runs from like a southeast to a true north. But okay. you don't see anything of alarm. Okay. All right. Jump on down. Give me an acrobatics check. Not athletics. Uh... Yeah, yeah, you can do athletics. Swell. Much better. You, with ease and steadiness, come all the way down. As you join them, you all look around. It's warmer than anticipated. Even Naza kind of breaks in. This is, uh, the deepest I've been. Zilkin did say that it made him feel like home. This could potentially explain that phenomenon. And she's referring to the temperature. Those that like the warmth. This feel good. This is how I was raised. This is true. I mate, it feels like I'm <laughs> out sea in the tropics. <laughs> I like it. Which direction do you guys wish to go? I think it's the, the you said the southwest is the direction. So it goes southeast to true opening, north. Opening, right? Oh, okay. Southeast would be uh would be the direction in which that that like burrow is, but that burrow is also sixty uh from where you guys are on the bottom, about sixty feet up. It's on the oh. second leg. 
So then I think we go true north, right? It's it's, you guys. It's a, essentially, it's a, you're saying you're saying it's a burrow in the middle of a wall. Yes. Sixty feet up. Mm-hmm. Where we would Correct. be able to reach. Okay. Yeah. The nose in one to go that way, and he points true north. Follow Toast. Lead the way, big fella. Henry can't see much, so he's just gonna follow. Well, you, you have um, uh, Darko's light, which he yeah, I have my yeah, but I mean that doesn't show a huge amount, so like I can't see very far with it, right? Yeah, I mean I can see sixty feet ahead. Yeah, you could see you could see up to the light, so which is like right after forty five feet, it pretty much diminishes into darkness. But but Darko and uh, Chosen and Naza can see like one hundred and twenty feet into darkness. Yeah, Henry's just going to trust him because he can't see anything, so he's going to follow along. Oh, presto some all the light. Are you going to press the light? Some balls of light that rotate around me. The usual like a little, thing. Like a little, little flicker? Like atomic structure of, of colorful light balls and protons moving around. Have you ever thought that that could make you a target? I'm not Alistar. <laughs> As, <laughs> as Alistar and Darko create their emissions of light and head further in, you guys walk about 50 to 60 or so feet true north. You realize that the chasm is coming to a point where above you is no longer open. Do you continue to f go further within? Any oh, light sure. above you is going to diminish immediately upon walking further. I mean, I'm 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 all I'm a happy camper going in. I can see. I'm not worried about it at all. Give me a marching order. Uh, I'll go first. Yeah. I'll be right after chosen, after chosen huh? then. Uh, Henry is right next to Darko because he has the light. You got it. Mm -hmm. Alistar. I'll be right behind them. That makes sense. And Naza leads it because from behind. She's in the back. She's in the back, yep. Now, yep. I did want to ask, did you leave the owlbears up top? Uh, They can't climb a rope, so yeah. You got it. They're protecting the cart and the yep. camp. Marsh alive. As the yep. five of you guys go and continue onward, with Cho leading and Naza in the rear, there are two things that immediately come to attention for you all. This entire area is burrowed. None of it seems natural. None of it seems cracked or broken. It all seems smoothened, as if something scraped against it, not just once, but multiple times to create this general feeling within. You guys had about, say, 10, 15 minutes down this burrowing and notice no other tunnels on your right or left, just going straight in one direction. You all begin to hear some kind of bubbling of sense. Like a <laughs> Kind of like a simmering of sorts. Do you continue further? Like, so does it sound like, from from my background, does it sound like lava or anything like that at all? It sounds like heated water. At the moment, yeah. which can mean a lot of things when you're inside of a, a, a chasm, but yes, sure. Okay. The heat does not necessarily intensify, but it does rise. It's not an it's not to an uncomfortable state, but it is present. Do you guys continue onward? Yes. Chosen. Give me a perception check as you're leading the group. You come to what looks to be a ledge. There's about a 15-foot drop, nothing significant. But, let's see what you see. Chosen. <laughs> now, by the way, guys, I totally apologize for no visual aids. Um, I just didn't have the time. So, Chosen. What you see are these huge pits of what looked to be water. They're bubbling in, sense, uh, in a sense, as if there was some kind of boiling going on. You don't see anything at the surface 
other than the bubbles protruding and a small ever so hintful reddish orange hue emitting from beneath the water. Uh, I I kind of hold my my hand up to stop the crew to then go towards the water real quick and, and inspect closer. Not obviously. So you so you want to go you want to go down the fifteen foot and go down to the water. Oh, I can't go. Okay. That's you could, you could go down. It's only fifteen feet. It's at a slope. It's not like uncomfortable. It's just where you hit oh, okay. it. It go. It does mm-hmm. steep down fifteen. And is it something that I could easily run back up if need be? Uh, for your size, yeah. Then sure, I slide down to inspect closer to like what this orangish reddish hue is in the water hoping to see or find valuables. Okay. The rest of the team, does anyone else join Chosen? Yeah, I'm going to follow them down there. Anyone else? Well, I mean, I think uh, Alistar's human... Alistar's missing. Oh, well, they're both missing. So, no worries. Naza stays back with Alistar and Henry at the top, since she's the only one who can see and they can't with the light sources going below. She kind of keeps, wa- she watches the back end. She goes, I'll, uh, I'll uh, just kind of keep my eyes uh, behind us at the moment as you investigate further. And as you guys go ahead, Darko, you immediately think, you, just in your head, not aloud, but in your head, you immediately think Remoraz, which is like, um, uh, like, and you immediately think this when you get to the water, not at the top, because you're like, hmm, let me go check this out, but uh, I haven't seen something like this in some time. Mm-hmm. A Remoraz is like, uh, think of the Anaconda movie, but a centipede-like substance that is ultra hot that heats up the water it is in for its babies. And you would know this because you were a dweller of mm-hmm. the volcanic life. You've mm-hmm. seen plenty of Remoraz. At one point, you guys even trained some of them until it became too dangerous. Mm-hmm. They uh, are... They are... They are... Temp- temperate creatures. You may or may not disturb them. It really depends. Is it is it like sound or vibration? Or... What you is it know that it to be? You would know it to be um, normally... The only way to draw them out of their home mm-hmm. would be to disturb the surface of the water, as this is their hatchery. Okay, and I'm assuming so, have we reached huh? the water yet? You guys are at like the water. You guys aren't in the water or anything like that. There's like a little yeah. lip of like maybe I've... cool foot between the ledge and the water, so it's not like you just walk up and a pebble falls in. But chosen what you see um, to give you a general idea. There's actually an image I might have that I might be able to put up for you guys. So let me find that while I describe it. Um, chosen. So what you see is like this pool of water. And within it seems to be this. Well, both of you guys see this. But there's like a, a reddish hue glow beneath. And it is, I guess you could say, a uncomfortable feeling. Because what you see below is is something you yourself have never actually experienced. in a sense of being even, you know, like this far into the ground Mm -hmm. and you know what let me just go ahead and drop an image for you guys give me one quick second now while you're doing this these remoras do they glow Uh or do they do do they have any like if it's dark do are they recognizable or or are they kind of stealthy like in in the dark in the water you can see it glowing okay. in the water kind of like okay. uh it's like in a uh uh i wouldn't go as far as saying hibernating state but it is mm-hmm. definitely um not moving okay and is it gl- does it glow red is that it what, is, what we're seeing it here? is giving off like a glow a reddish hue well i'm about to drop okay. the image on you guys right now. one second okay and one two three four boom Ooh. Oh. Um. Ooh. 
Now, okay. you guys are like at the top, and there's a more of a lip. This is not the exact image of where you guys are located, but this is kind of an idea of what you guys would be witnessing. Now, the rest of the group, Henry and Alistar and Naza, see some hewing glows and whatnot, but they don't quite pick up the entire physique of the creature. Yeah, if if they ain't fucking with us, we ain't. Yeah, I'm not fucking with them. So I I look to Darko and goes and think, not a good idea to no. disturb this. And then he turns around and starts walking back up. Don't touch the water. Whatever you do. Yep. And let me go ahead and drop it in the chat so you know. For it's a good note. Good note though. Let's keep it noted just in case we're in this area. Not. Don't touch the water. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. Like, what if another creature is attacking us? We knock mm -hmm. him in the water. Into the water. Yeah, it's true. Let them deal with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys wish to do? Um, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna make sure that Chosen is is heading back up towards the uh, and kind of just you know. With my knowledge, just make sure that we're walking quietly enough away to not disturb the number. Yep. yep. You go back it. up the incline and then heading further, deeper, looking, trying to uh, uh, um, specifically look for glowy, th glowing things. Now excluding glowing things in the water. <laughs> As you guys are looking about the rocks, you do see that the veins in the rocks seem to be uh, darko for sure, or of some sort volcanic, giving off this nice, you know, between goldish to reddish hue. Not in the sense of mineral, but in the sense of just hue within the rocks. You know these to be um, lava rocks, basically. Uh, these lava rocks are not alive, but they were created because of usually Remoraz uh, disturbing the area where lava gets stuck in a in a uh, material sense and when the Remoraz burrows through it it creates this like you know slowly ever so burning glow throughout the rock eventually the whatever lava was captured in there will dissipate and it'll just become hard and obsidian but the glow is because of you know last steam lava that has yet to sizzle away from the from the non-cooling of the temperature down here as you guys, Can I make a huh? perception check for any more etches in stone or anything like Absolutely. that down where we Go are? Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't see etchings. Okay. But give me give me a history check. Let's see what you recall. Good. There's something. You feel like the fact that you found a Remoraz nest, of all things, a nest. I mean, you guys didn't look too much into how many were down there in the sense of eggs, mm -hmm. but you saw a nest. Yeah. And... You guys used to, you know, you as in your, your culture, your your family, your, your people used to, before realizing it was too dangerous, used to train these in some sense and form. And then you recall that you haven't seen one of these suckers in a very long time. Not that they're hard to find. I'm sure if you had to go look for one, you could. But you guys learned your lesson. So why would there be a pit? with something other than a Remoraz killing things, like your allies, Zilkin, and why would there be markings, and why would the person in which you knew in the past be fucking with these kind of things? Mm. Not everything mm. is adding up. Mm -hmm. But there is a big message in front of you that you just can't decipher. I feel like... I feel like I'm in a flashback or something like that. I don't, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting weird vibes in here. This place is giving me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know. What else do you guys choose to do? I keep heading on until I find shiny rocks that are worth valuable. Give me a perception check, Henry. Give me a perception check. As you, Henry, as you're walking with Naza, 
Naza kind of whispers to you. Hey, Brady. Would you say that perhaps us traveling here is an ill omen of sense? I, any time I'm on the land, I think it might be an ill omen. Uh, this seems particularly ill, though. <laughs> I'm, I wish you less riches at the end of this. Oh, I really hope that uh, whatever it is we find, it's beneficial. <laughs> As I didn't want to bring this up to the others, but Zilkin died almost the moment they came down, and none of us saw his body. Are you serious, man? Yes. You didn't think it was worth mentioning to the rest till now when we see this Barry water. Well, everyone came down, and I didn't want to spook everyone back up. Why? Because we have a job. And you might not know Mosh and me, but we complete our jobs, which is why we're still alive. I can try to complete his job. I just wanted to put it out there that, um... Maybe keep an eye out for Zilkin. If we find him, then we'll know we're in uh, potential harm, most likely. <laughs> we're in the danger zone, lass. Start singing like a little bit under his breath. Welcome to the danger zone. <laughs> Chosen. Yeah, you're good, Alistair. We didn't hear nothing. Chosen. What you see. Up ahead is a huge opening. This one looks like it was blasted through. At least another 20 to 35 feet of just blasted um, material. Blasted as in like, like rocks explosives and explosives or like. Assumably. I mean, you need know, not necessarily explosives, but magic. But I see like scorch. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, more or less in the sense of, you know, some kind of. Huey Dewey forcefulness. Um, yeah. Since gunpowder is still very new to this land itself, it, I, it's doubtful that that's what was used. Um, Can I see if there's, like, uh, not necessarily chisel marks, but, like, if it was broken by, f like, some type of bludgeoning force versus, like, you know, yeah. explosive um, well, force? As, as, all of you guys, as all of you guys come to this, you uh you kind of take further into investigating it. So give me an investigation check. As the rest of you guys all see this huge just maw of an opening. Like we're talking fifteen feet high by about twenty feet wide. What kind of rock am I looking for? Uh to you it looks like a mix of obsidian and sulfuric. Hmm, it's so dark. Obsidian. Yeah, Very smooth to dark. touch with minor heat. It's lovely. Listen to the light. Oh, yeah, it looks like a rock to me, mate. Yeah, me too. Me. Just like every woman. <laughs> Trust me, there's not much to these rocks inside here. You'll know it when you see it. Chosen. It does not look like one used a weapon nor hand to create this opening. Alistar, as you're looking about it all, though there is natural formation, when you come to this massive opening, though it does not look... Well, it looks forced, but though it does not look man-made forced, it has a odd subnatural sense to it that you can't quite put your finger on. If you wouldn't mind giving me a history check. Let me see if I can't recall. I do believe I might have seen this before. Yes, most definitely did. As you think about this, 
in the size in which you see ahead of you, the 15 foot tall, 20 foot wide, in the rough burrow of this opening, you think, my goodness, could it be a purple worm? Which are yeah. huge gargantuan beasts that consume anything within front of it and are known for their deep burrow activities. Yes, yes, during the course on flora and fauna, one of the fauna, the many, is the worm that delves deep into the earth and, and digs great, uh, great large caverns just like this. In fact, it can bury through obsidian rock. This is why knowing your rocks is so important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I might. He's on another one again. I might mm -hmm. recommend we leave rather dangerous uh, to get in the way of the worm. Oh, we're just getting stuck. These aren't the kind of worms that you fish with. Yeah. Maybe if you want a terrasquay. Depends what you're fishing with, Mike. <laughs> what do you guys wish to do? Henry's going to go with the crowd. He doesn't understand this world at all. <laughs> He's very far from the he ocean. Chosen is determined to find valuables. I mean, Darko almost kind of feels like it, this is all like a setup now at this point. Um, so he's just like, he's cautious, but he's he's still continuing onward because he kind of feels like, you know, none of this can actually be real. Wait, so then Alistar is behind them while they're all walking away and be like, Hey, wait, didn't you not hear me? A worm! It's, it's, a, it's a worm! It's just like a <laughs> I, I, I bloody heard of a worm. We use them for fishing. I know you don't want to catch a big fish, but some of us like to. <sighs> and I hit myself and I cast uh, whatever it's called, mage armor. Mage armor, absolutely. <laughs> Chosen, that. Want chosen? To find, chosen want to find valuable. That's why we come. Oh, I never thought I'd say this, but Chosen, Chosen's got the best advice tonight. He's told this more, and it's a worm. I'm going to have to turn him back into an ape. Smarter as okay. a monkey. A worm of gold. Chosen, let's find the gold. Continue on. Onward to waffles. To waffles. <laughs> As you take your first couple steps with him, it begins to echo as the cavernous excavation seems to forever mimic any motion or sound within in one direction forward. As odd as it may seem in this complete darkness outside of the lights in which two of you are emitting, ahead, an ever so slightly white glow appears. Chosen is the first to notice, and then Darko, then Naza and Alistar and Henry. The this Henry white light. Light before anyone else since it's so dark. <laughs> Well, you're well, Chosen's leading the pack. Then Darko has a light in front of you. And then you're next to Alistar, who has a light over his head. So then, you know, there's a lot of disturbances in between. But as you all come to see this, it does not grow. It does not shrink. But it sits in size about 100 feet ahead of you. Darko. In your mind, and only in your mind, you hear. Welcome, old friend. And that's where we're going to take it into Discord. Mm. Not me, oh, not his friend. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs>